I'd like to invite Sayyid Farooq uh, uh, Mustafa, who is the ambassador for Couchsurfing in Pakistan. Um, if Farooq is with us, yes, he is. Um, I'd also like to invite um, Axel Javier, who's um, an international tourist and he's a vlogger, um, along with his partner, Sherry Al Khatak. Um, both of them are running rock climbing KPK. And I'd also like to invite Colonel retired Vaseem Ahmed who's the project director for Park China OFC and the SEO. Thank you. Sorry, I hope I Guys, we're gonna have to wrap it up really quickly. We have 15 odd minutes, I think. Uh, so uh, just rapid fire question. So I'm going to start uh, today's sort of talk. Um, the, the topic of discussion is digital and entrepreneurial opportunities in the Pakistani tourism um, ecosystem. Um, so starting off, um, we have a few areas of discussion. Um, number one is uh, the opportunities and challenges for uh, upcoming startups. Um, I'm going to direct the questions. We don't have a lot of time, so we only have about 20 minutes. So we're going to make this uh, really, really quickly, uh, go through this quickly, and uh, get a lot of insights from our panelists over here. So um, starting off, opportunities and challenges for upcoming startups. Uh, I'd like to direct this question towards uh, Komel. Um, uh, it's a pleasure meeting you, Komel. Uh, well done on all the success. Uh, I'm a good, great fan of your work as well. Um, Opportunities and challenges for upcoming startups. So, Kumail, uh, what do you think are the opportunities and what are the challenges? I know you've been through uh, a bit of an entrepreneurial journey. Um, so, you know, what are the challenges vis-a-vis, -vis, would there be funding, talent, market, IP? Um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll pass the question over to you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for giving me the opportunity of uh, speaking here at the dialogue. Uh, so, in terms of opportunity, uh, it's a 200 million population. We, in Pakistan, we have 200 million people, right? Uh, you don't have that kind of uh, market opportunity in, in most of the countries in the world. So, sitting here, we're basically sitting on a gold mine, uh, and we just need to know how to make full use of that. Uh, if we talk about the challenges, the main challenge is that uh, people like me, so I'm, I'm, I'm still 26 right now, right? And I've traveled for the past six, to six or seven years uh, in Pakistan alone mm -hmm. and with groups. Uh, the only place where we can learn right now is through our, our seniors in the industry. Uh, only these people are, are willing enough to let us know how to do, uh, how to operate in the market. Apart from that, in terms of policies, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, getting into the cultures and the communities, it's, it's a pretty difficult area you're playing with. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, you need to know what is happening in Kohistan, you need to know what is happening in Balochistan, you need to know what is happening in Chilas, you need to be aware of whatever is happening in the country. So, for, it's, it does sound easy being in the travel space, you know, uh, we operate an online marketplace. But to sell it to people, we need to know what are the challenges on ground. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is, is licensing an issue? Uh, you know, uh, what do you tell a traveler before you send them uh, to a community? Mm -hmm. Are they fully aware of what kind of uh, cultural barriers they have to face? Mm -hmm. that is some, th these are some of the challenges and, and you know, I can, I can keep talking about it mm -hmm. and not reach a single point where I can say, gee, this is the challenge that we're facing. Mm -hmm. So for me, there are, there are two things that, that, that is mainly the, the problem. One is that it is a very dif difficult industry to be in. Tourism is mm. not an easy thing for, for people to be in. People mm. understand that in the peak season, they can come in and they can grab all the attention they want. Mm. Uh, they can earn for three, four months. They can do this as a part-time business and then go off. Mm. What they don't know is they're playing with the lives of people. They're playing with the experiences of people. And the impact on not only the travelers but on the local communities is uh, is huge. We don't even realize it right now. Okay, how much impact are we overall? Mm. So uh, you, you're yeah. essentially you're advocating more um, stricter adherence to laws and licensing and all sorts. Because we see all this plethora of 
new tour operators uh, yeah. kind of springing up. Um, they don't really have a lot of training. They definitely don't have the education or maybe even the background uh, to kind of um, uh, to kind of venture into this uh, this sort of field. As you said, you've travelled for a, a sort of a long time. Six years is uh, uh, it's a bit of an experience. I've kind of done the same across Pakistan as well. Uh, I know how challenging it can be. Um, uh, what would be the sort of um, uh, policy implementations you would have from, uh, say, the government side uh, to kind of curtail this, uh, you know, kind of mess of um, underrated sort of uh, travel operators? And vis-a-vis, -vis is, is your platform uh, accepting any of those people? Or um, how are you uh, kind of working out the licensing part? So, uh, what I just talked about was basically just the tourism side, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't the digital side of, mm -hmm. of the business. Uh, in terms of what the government can do or what the policy makers can do, uh, I think they've already mentioned that they're trying to facilitate people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not, they, they've made it clear it's not their job to bring in public-private partnerships, mm -hmm. uh, investments. Uh, they've made it pretty clear that they'll facilitate in terms of roads and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, there are a lot of problems in the, in the tech space as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you see this developing. So we've been working for three years and we haven't seen uh, much serious players till now. Mm -hmm. uh, there should be competition. Mm -hmm. uh, why aren't people working on the same model that we are? Mm -hmm. uh, and because that question leads to all of these answers that maybe the tech space isn't mat mature yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe the people in the tech space aren't mature yet. Mm -hmm. And whatever we're working in is a huge bubble that will blow up very soon. Yeah, I mean, um, I know you've had um, some recent troubles. And I, I, I wanted to hit upon the sort of IP value, um, uh, you know, copycat models coming out, et cetera, et cetera. Um, th there's been a great, without learning, you can't go out into this field. It's, it, it's very hard, especially implementing a model like yours or like any other, even a simple OTA in Pakistan, it's a very, very hard model. There's a lot of complexities behind it. Um, uh, how would you suggest that, you know, the e-tourism segment, there, you know, there are other players coming in, small, be it, albeit smaller players with less experience. Um, what would be a route for them to take to kind of help in this journey of Pakistan becoming a sort of digitized tourism uh, economy? So again, so I, I, I'm basically <laughs> talking in circles because uh. the reason is that to come into the e-tourism market, mm -hmm. you have to understand tourism first. Mm -hmm. And there are very few people in the market who've, who've, who've tried to basically do both. Okay. Either they've only concentrated on the digital side. Mm -hmm. uh, so one day they wake up and they say, you know, the money is in tourism. Let's start an online Facebook mm -hmm. page or let's start an online website mm -hmm. and let's start doing tourism. Mm -hmm. But they don't, do not have any on-ground experiences. They do not have any seniors in the market to learn from. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the problem mainly. So when you don't understand the field that you're basically d digitizing, mm -hmm. I think you can't really do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and the main reason why this has happened is because our people have been using shortcuts. Exactly. Uh, and till the time you're, you're doing that. So if, if I just uh, talk on the example of why Jovago failed, it, mm -hmm. was a, it was a huge hotel booking website which failed miserably. Mm -hmm. uh, they spent uh, millions uh, of About eight and a half million yeah. dollars in yes. minus. Yes. And why? Because they couldn't understand the, the nature of how the locals worked in all the communities. Exactly. exactly. That is something you need to understand before actually getting into practical working in Pakistan. For, for Pakistan is, is a very tough market. It's a very, very tough market. And, uh, so yes, <laughs> I, I keep on going around. And I know, I, I would love to talk to you a little bit more about this, Camille, but unfortunately we're a little pressed for time as well. Um, kind of moving on to the next uh, sort of uh, uh, question, um, the, the kind of role of social media in uh, influences in kind of promoting tourism. Um, I'd like um, Axel to kind of uh, get into this. I know there's been a lot of controversy recently uh, in regards to this Alex from uh, Lost With Purpose, uh, you know, making uh, a few videos and probably she was on the right track to be honest. Um, uh, what is the role of social media influencers and how um, can we uh, channel that kind of positive energy that's being emanated from Pakistan and in a safe manner as well? So I think that um, instead of canalizing positive energy, just um, I think we should rather be honest. Mm -hmm. And if I look at this 
vlogs like Lost With Purpose or others, um, I compare it to my own experiences and see, all right, she has been to Baluchistan and to um, other areas where I don't have any access to because mm -hmm. I need an NOC and I need, there, there are a lot of difficulties to go to these places, you know, mm -hmm. which um, seem to be, or appear to be very easy. I mean, I wish it would be that easy and um, if tourists come here to Pakistan with these expectations, they see this beautiful valley in Baluchistan and see the beaches of Gwadha and then they get this access denied, I think this is, can have like a very bad backlash on mm -hmm. the country and its reputation. Mm -hmm. So I think we should rather be honest instead of just, you know, just spreading a positive image. Hmm. So um, you're saying that, uh, you know, uh, the vloggers are essentially, um, uh, I think the general community is, is kind of pe putting Pakistan on a pedestal where they're making it sound like it's very, very easy to travel in the country and uh, it's, you know, you just get there and you can do all these beautiful things. Whereas uh, it, the reality is a little bit more different. I mean, the point is, it's like, um, if, if you promise people this, and this is what, prom what probably all the vloggers traveling in Pakistan are doing, um, if you promise them, you know, you're gonna have like a very easy travel to everywhere you wanna go, and people come here with these expectations and you cannot keep up with these promises, then I think, um, this is, this is a big problem because these tourists will go back to their home countries with a negative experience. This is what nobody wants. Mm. Okay. Um, again, quickly wrapping up. Um, sorry, Axel, I can't give you any more time at the moment. Um, I, I'd like to direct the, uh, the same question towards uh, uh, Talha um uh, from TCM. So the central media, um, I'm, I follow you. Um, and. Uh, yeah, um, so I, I follow you, I know you're very hard-hitting sort of a digital, uh, uh, you know, news network, shall we say, um, and you're in the forefront of uh, these sort of, you know, uh, this engagement with social media and bloggers, etc. What's your take on, uh, on uh, sort of this, this influence of uh, this rosy picture painting of uh, Pakistani bloggers? So, uh, first of all, thank you so much. So, two, three things. So, number one, which you know, you mentioned that uh, people are coming. So, mm -hmm. I was in London for six, seven years. So, I have a lot of friends now, who want to come to Pakistan. But there might be not a single sort of a platform where you're getting sari ke sari information. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing, which Alex and we did a lot of stories on travelers who are coming to Pakistan, mm -hmm. uh, and the story which we heard is that we are going to Balochistan, we are going to Sawat, we are going to. Uh, interior Punjab, but we don't know exactly what to do there. So mm -hmm. there is no Lonely Planet sort of a booklet in Pakistan. So as mm -hmm. a Pakistani, mm -hmm. so I have, I don't know where to find mm -hmm. all this information. Mm -hmm. So in terms of opportunities, because as a content platform, uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity towards content. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to the ministry's website, you go to the Punjab, so you know what you know the website is going on. So you're saying that an aggregated platform, essentially, which, uh, which provides this sort of information, um, uh, that's something which is lacking, or an aggregated service maybe, you know, uh, I mean, I agree completely, I've seen the uh, government websites and the, the tourist information centers, which uh, don't really do a lot for our image. Exactly. So one other thing, you know, which Alex also mentioned that uh, there are no do and don'ts. Mm -hmm. You don't know that you have so much so that you have glamorized it that you think that you have left it behind Europe. You have just seen a lot of Instagram, you know, very beautiful pictures and that's mm -hmm. it. So you need to like come on ground and tell a little bit of reality that, you know, these are some of the cultural barriers. I mean, you have to go to KPK, so you have to go to this way. If you have to live in Punjab, then you have to go to this way. If you have to live in Islam, then you could, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, do sort of whatever you want to do. So, mm -hmm. I think the information flow is not as such there. Mm -hmm. So, the information need to be there mm -hmm. to tell like both sides. And then obviously you decide whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, um, Farooq Mustafa, um, you're uh, kind of an ambassador for uh, Couchsurfing in Pakistan. Uh, Couchsurfing is uh, sort of a community uh, for all the people that don't know, which is kind of based around uh, the travel interests and travel communities globally and um, it's a very open sort of a, a community. I'd, I'd love for you to tell 
us a little bit more about it and um, your take on uh, you know the social media uh, in maybe invasion or, uh, or whatever you would like to call it in, in Pakistan and uh, furthermore how the right information can uh, reach the right people in the country. Um, yeah, well, I have the two sides to it. Uh, one, uh, two questions you asked me about one about couch surfing mm -hmm. and the other about uh, the social media and uh, the digital, uh, the, the main subject. Mm -hmm. I think couch surfing has been uh, very instrumental, uh, who has, whoever has been using it and it's like more about cultural exchange, a more of a localized experience, mm -hmm. uh, a, a more of a, a, a knowing people, knowing cultures and in that pursuit I think uh, in Pakistan whatever I know I have uh, I know a lot of people who have been hosting locals and foreigners alike inbound mm. uh, maybe more than I have hosted more than 450 people uh, in last two three years and I can see that multiplying factor in past two years that I have hosted at my place actually at my home and I showed around and there are people my colleagues are sitting here as well mm -hmm. who have been doing that and this is quite obligatory nothing we don't make any money out of it mm -hmm. but this is quite soul searching it's not that like we need to go white or Gora people to host everybody we just like mm -hmm. open and I have traveled to so many countries and in in, in that I have really been uh, got hosted by a lot of people having said that I really see a lot of uh, the way Talha and uh, uh, my fellow colleague also said that it's like we need to regularize first basic uh, conventional way of touris tourism properly mm -hmm. then obviously then digital we, we nobody can deny the social media power of social media at the moment and it has a like we are talking about Alex video it really went like anything mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the way we actually want to the basics really I meet a lot of people like Alex and uh, lo uh, bl bloggers and everything I tourists as well and I asked a question which is very co basic question that how did you end up in Pakistan what did you how did you come to know how did you decide we read hundreds of blog British backpacker society uh, uh, lost back lost uh, with purpose and and then we read everything and then we uh, read two books from a German author and then and then we realized that okay it's safe and we can come there and and I realized that there is no single website which gives us the access to the whole of proper information government or private whatever mm -hmm. there is no uh, tour guide on YouTube let's say that by local or a proper tour guide to Pakistan mm -hmm. Let's talk about digital revolution and digital entrepreneurship, basic things, you know. So that thing, coming to that social media and all those things, this, there is a fairy, flowery, fancy picture out there. They are right and that's really with Alex, uh, recently before this conference, uh, this summit, Alex has came up with these things and that's reality. Mm -hmm. And then knowing those things from uh, different hundreds reading hundreds of blog and making your decision to travel to Pakistan and finding your way mm -hmm. in uh, from Balochistan border from China's border from India's border mm -hmm. and we have a lot of problem hosting people anyone a German traveler coming into Pakistan from Indian border and he just tells me my address and I'm in trouble mm -hmm. <laughs> like, exactly. okay. no so no I, 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 so I, that I think agree. we need yeah. to regularize first mm -hmm digitally have that proper information available the welcoming airports port of entries that that really needs to show the tourist help desk tourist helpline tourist police tourist hotline hmm. everything then then the digital really the infrastructure the basic infrastructure will give the support to the digital revolution and entrepreneurship i think it's a it's a very uh, sort of a chicken and egg problem um, i know uh, uh, quite a few people who are trying to solve that this uh, issue as well uh, content curation, I think, uh, as your fellow panelists will tell you, um, it's a very, very expensive affair, uh, especially in a, such a fluid situation like Pakistan, where you know Babu Sar doesn't open up, uh, you know, at the same time every single year. Uh, there's roadworks going on everywhere. The government announces an NOC uh, sort of uh, waiver, and that's not being implemented. And you know, these sort of fluid things. Um, so some sort of maybe. Uh, you know, crowdsourced, community sourced um, uh, portal could be the answer to that as well, uh, further down the line. And I know a lot of uh, local uh, people are, there is a website being developed by one of my extended friend, he's really doing a marvelous work on point A to B, how to, even as a Pakistani living in Karachi, for example, 
I need to go to Naran and I really am lost how to go about it. Mm. Honestly, mm. let's talk about it. Yeah. Great. Um, s- sorry, um, thank you for uh, having to move on uh, really quickly. Um, I'd like to invite uh, uh, Colonel Vaseem Ahmed Saab. Uh, Colonel Saab, uh, you're, uh, you have a lot of experience um, uh, in the field. Um, you're the, the Park China OFC and with the SEO as well, the SEO has made some really, really good strides uh, in the sort of Gilgit Baltistan and the Kashmir region as well uh, in offering services. Um, my main question is, um, you know, kind of generation of uh, jobs in tourism, uh, how has your organization affected that? I know, I know it's sort of a top-down approach. Um, and how can other uh, smaller organizations kind of take a bottom-up approach in the grassroots levels to create jobs? Uh, thank you very much and uh, first of all I would like to extend my gratitude for the, to the organizer of this event for giving the, me this opportunity to speak here and also uh, organizing such a wonderful event and very thought provoking event for the benefit of all of us, of our country. I belong to special communication organizations and uh, special communication organization was established in 1976 to develop, operate, and maintain uh, communication infrastructure in areas which were totally barren from the ICT, basic ICT facilities in that time. So over the journey of uh, for three years, SU has developed massive communication infrastructure, and uh, whatever development you see, ICT has a very important, important role to play. These areas where SU is operating in Gilgit, Baltistan, and Azad, Jammu and Kashmir are naturally gifted with unique beauty which needs no emphasis. But to capitalize the actual benefits of the region through tourism, you need ICT infrastructure, especially in the modern era where we are living now. The development of ICT has totally transformed our daily life. If you leave your mobile telephone at home and go even a few kilometers away, you start feeling insecure. Now you see those tourists who come hundreds and thousands of miles away from their places and go to these areas and there is no communication, there is no connectivity, how insecure they feel. Hmm. So that means that ICT has a very, very important tr- role to play for tourism. Hmm. Having said that, I would like to say that uh, Connectivity, all, whatever you have, my fellow colleagues have spoken so far, whether it is social media or something, or for all this you need connectivity. If you don't have connectivity, there's no social media, there's no access to the information. You cannot access the website where the information about, uh, the, uh, about uh, these areas are available. With the project that I am project director, Park Chan Optical Fiber Table Project, we have deployed uh, the cable from Rawalpindi to Punjab, high capacity transmission system. And I'm sure that with the development of this uh, cable infrastructure, there'll be very substantial improvement in IC infrastructure. And even those areas which were communication barren, the far flung areas of the region will be benefited. There'll be more access to the people living in those areas and the people away from those areas and all over the world to access to the information, what, that, what all these areas look like, what are the procedure, what, what is the culture, and so many other things. And not only th- for that, this will generate a lot of job opportunities for the people living in those areas. Mm. This will provide education, fa- basic education facilities to those people who were totally aloof from the basic education needs. So I think ICT has a very, very important and important role to play for tourism. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. I know SU is doing a uh, sort of a great job. I think um, you've also been working on a, a, a travel symbol <coughs> uh, for tourists as well. Uh, it's in the pipeline anyway, uh, along with UFO and, and a couple of other networks. Um, and the, the, the kind of reception uh, you get in those areas, it's all because of uh, SEO. Um, the we as travelers probably know how hard it is to travel in probably Gilgit, Baltistan and uh, in Kashmir, and if SEO sims weren't there, we'd probably be cut off from a lot of people. Uh, so thank you for your efforts. Um, again, a couple of minutes left. Um, I'm just going to.
quickly uh, address Sheryar. Uh, Sheryar, you're, um, uh, you're working with Excel to kind of um, launch rock climbing in, in KPK. Um, you're the instructor and the root setter. Um, uh, so tell me a little bit more about that and uh, what sort of uh, uh, what digitization sort of techniques are you using to kind of promote uh, this service? Well, uh, for the digital, the digital content and the everything, uh, Excel would I explain that much more better. Mm -hmm. But my role in this project is to, as a root setter and a instructor, as we are working on this rock climbing project, uh, to to you know uh, work in these ruler areas which have been affected by war and which have now uh, not a good image in front of people. You have a very sustainable sort of uh, uh, element to uh, the business you're conducting. Yes. Uh, so, so elaborate a little bit more upon that as well. Um, so I will con continue with So, uh, mm -hmm. project mein yehi kaam hai ke उन जगहों पे जहाँ पर वॉर अफेक्टेड आईडीपीज़ हैं या जो सफर कर चुके हैं, उनको किसी तरीके से उनके लिए टूरिज्म के थ्रू और इस तरह स्पोर्ट्स एक्टिविटीज़ के थ्रू उनके लिए कुछ एक बेटर एक चांस दिया जाए उनको। रॉक क्लाइमिंग फॉर मी इस अ बहुत पर्सनल चीज़ है, इट हैज चेंज मी एस अ पर्स नए लोगों को भी सिखा रहा हूँ, so basically हमारे ये वो हुआ था साथ में कि why not to do it on a bigger scale कि ताकि it's 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 kind of giving a personal satisfaction to कि कि जो जो चीज mainly best beneficial है मैं चाहता हूँ उसको बड़े scale पे भी हो, so we came me and Excel came with the with this project to बोलते दरदम खेल जो रॉक्स दरदम खेल में यस एक्सेल वुड एक्सप्लेन दैट मच मोर सो बेसिकली व्हाट आवर प्रोजेक्ट इस अबाउट इस ब्रिंगिंग रॉक क्लाइमिंग टू दोस रूरल एरियाज एस शी हैज ऑलरेडी पॉइंटेड इट आउट Um, bringing rock climbing to those rural areas which have been affected and provide them with a sustainable income and canalizing the use energy into something productive and positive mm -hmm. um, which will in different ways um, you know help the society help the community in these areas mm -hmm. um, change the image and you know bring the people something they can really make a living out of. Mm -hmm. and provide some sort of sustainable uh, income. Uh, and that's the way, I think um, uh, when we look at other countries which have kind of uh, uh, developed a very good sustainable uh, sort of infrastructure, Bhutan is one of the countries which uh, probably has done a really, really good job at it. Um, they managed to curtail, uh, keep it a high-end market. Uh, there's a lot of regions, I know it was mentioned earlier in the panel talks that um, the people are littering all around, the, the general lack of awareness and education around uh, travel and tourism as well. And I think you're doing a great job kind of promoting the grassroots level sort of a movement and a lot more needs to be done uh, in this field as well. Yeah, we hope we can um, present the project a little bit further in a couple of minutes. <laughs> sure. Um, I'd, I'd like to open the, uh, the, the panel to audience questions, please, um, if anybody has any. Um, uh, they can uh, raise your hands and uh, we have five minutes and we can kind of wrap up things after that. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Suhail Khan and uh, I'm a student and a teacher. My question is about uh, bringing uh, information about tourist sports in Pakistan in different languages. Uh, we have most of the content in uh, English. Uh, you talk about Lonely Planet or you talk about any other uh, digital information that you can uh, find in any blog. The, most of it is in English. For local audience, we don't have anything, uh, any such thing in Urdu 
or you don't have any other thing in French or Arabic or any other audience. So uh, in this debate, I think we need to talk about it more and we need to motivate or we need to address the uh, government and the uh, people responsible and the people related to this uh, kind of a business so that they can uh, uh, bring in their effort in this uh, area and they can bring in information about Pakistan in different languages. Mm. Thank you, sir. So this is the uh, comment, uh, completely agreed. And there's a lot of people developing a lot of content in other languages. Um, Chinese Arabic is being developed, but uh, there are technical difficulties behind uh, deploying a large scale sort of content uh, in various languages, uh, but I think I agreed a lot more work seems to be done there. Sir. Assalamualaikum, my name is Khalid. Yes, sir. And my pioneer of tourism, Shiraz Poonja, is also sitting there, who is, I think, a bit hesitant in asking questions because the uh, youngsters are sitting there, Shiraz has more experience in all of them. I'm sure, yes. So, one thing I want to ask you, the panelists have asked all of these things, they have told me that this is digitize karenge aur ye sab kuch karna chahte hain lekin ye sare problems to hain inka solution bhi koi inme se hame batana chahega because humne seo ki glorification dekh li ki unhone khambe laga diye sab kuch kar diya lekin ye hai ki what next tourist kaise aayenge because main khud 32 saal se tourism se attach hu aur agar government se figure puchein to wo takriban 2.5 million de dete hain jo ke overseas pakistanis aur afghan refugees jo ke canada america se pakistan mein aate hain and to be on the fair side agar aap mujhse puche तो पिछले दस सालों में किसी भी साल हमने शायद सात आठ हजार टूरिस्ट से ज्यादा जेन्युइन टूरिस्ट से ज्यादा इस मुल्क में कभी नहीं आए सर मैं आपको पूरे फिगर्स दे देता हूँ इसके अंदर प्रॉब्लम मेरे हैं कुछ रिसर्च का एरिया है इसके अंदर तो वो बिल्कुल आपकी बात सॉफिसत आपके साथ में सहमत हूँ इस बात के ऊपर कि जो टू पॉइंट मिलियन का एक फिगर कोर्ट किया जाता है उसके अंदर काफ़ी तरह एक्सपैक्ट पाकिस्तानीज भी आ जाते हैं जैसा कि आपने कहा अफगान रेफ्यूजीज भी उसके अंदर आते हैं जो एक्चुअल वाइबल जिसे हम टूरिज़म कहते हैं आ, कुछ हज़ारों में नहीं है वो वाकई तकरीबन 200,000 के आ, जो करीब आती है पर साल के ऊपर दिस इज़ सम इन डेप्थ रिसर्च वी हैव कंडक्टेड तो वो आपकी बात बिल्कुल ठीक है देखिए अगर आप आ, मैं यंगस्टर्स की बिहाफ पे मैं इतना यंग नहीं हूँ लेकिन मैं थोड़ा सा शायद जवाब देना चाहूँगा उनके बिहाफ पे एम शो दिल दिल लाइक टू चाइम इन एज वेल हमारे लिए एक जर्नी है जी ठीक है एक टेक्निकल रेवोल्यूशन लेकर आना आ, किसी भी चीज़ के अंदर पाकिस्तान के अंदर आपका माशाल्लाह इतना एक्सपीरियंस हो चुका हुआ है इट्स अ वेरी एक्सपेंसिव जॉब ठीक है ना आप एक भी हम कहते हैं कि एक वेबसाइट क्रिएट करनी है बड़ा आसान होता है जो रक्शे के पीछे भी लिखा होता है पच्चीस हज़ार रुपये में वेबसाइट बनवा लें ठीक है ना उसके अंदर बड़ा फ़र्क होता है ठीक है आपको एक प्रॉपर टेक टीम सपोर्ट करनी है दस डॉलर एक आपका महीने के एवरेज स्पेंड है ठीक है ना उसके अंदर ना हमारे लिए कोई फंडिंग है ना कोई इशूज़ हैं हमारे बड़ों ने यू नो यू हैड ऑल द एक्सपीरियंस तो गवर्नमेंट ने इसको सपोर्ट करने के लिए क्या किया पिछले 20 साल में या 30 साल में या 40 साल में या अभी भी क्या कर रही है सो सो द मेजर एरियाज ऑफ इनोवेशन इनोवेशन वहीं से आती है जी जहाँ पे यू हैव इनफ एम्पल डिस्पोजेबल सर ऑफ फाइनेंस अवेलेबल ठीक है ना अब वो फाइनेंस की नॉन अवेलेबिलिटी की वजह से बहुत बहुत अच्छी कंपनीज हैं जी पाकिस्तान के अंदर Uh, our talent is not uh, less than anybody else. Uh, even digital side पर भी ले लें या tourism side पर भी ले लें अगर आप लेकिन उसकी वजह से काफ़ी companies बड़ी बड़ी चीज़ों का सामना करते पड़ते हैं और youngsters के लिए और भी मुश्किल होते हैं parental pressures होते हैं सौ चीज़ होती है उसके लिए तो आप जैसे इंडस्ट्री बैटरेंस उनको थोड़ा सा गाइड करें तो उसके अंदर और भी बड़ी चीज़ें लाइक टू ओपन एंड सर आपने बहुत कीमती बात बल्कि हमसे की शेयर मैं मैं सिर्फ एज अ वेरी इन एक्सपीरियंस पर्सन मैं शेयर कर सकता हूँ कि इन द पास्ट हम दो साल से ऑपरेट कर रहे हैं एज एन ऑनलाइन पोर्टल मैंने पाकिस्तान की प्रमोशन कहीं बाहर जा किसी ना ट्रैवल मार्ट पर की ना किसी चीज़ पर की बट इन द पास टू ईयर्स हमने टेन थाउजेंड कस्टमर्स सर्व किए हैं ऑल ओवर पाकिस्तान और दैट इज़ ओनली थ्रू ऑनलाइन प्रमोशन ऑफ द कंट्री ठीक है उसमें डोमेस्टिक टूरिस्ट नाइन्टी टेन का मैं अभी बता रहा था किसी को कि नाइन थाउजेंड उसमें से जो है वो डोमेस्टिक टूरिस्ट हैं जिनको जिनके पास इन्फॉर्मेशन ही नहीं थी कि वो किस तरह जाएँ किसके साथ जाएँ वहाँ पर हमने उनको कंसल्टेंसी ऑफर की कि जी आप ये कर सकते हैं Uh, और टू जो डिजिटल की अच्छी बात है वो ये है कि सर इसमें आप हमें दस साल आगे सोचना है uh, 
ہمیں پتا ہے کہ آج فیسلٹیز نہیں ہیں بٹ جب دس سال بعد فیسلٹیز ہوں گی تو ان کو مارکیٹ کرنے کے لیے ڈیجیٹائز جو ڈیجیٹل ویز آف مارکیٹنگ ہے صرف وہی اس کو وہ کر سکتے ہیں ادر وائز ایوری تھنگ از گیٹنگ ٹو ایکسپینسو آپ ابھی جس طرح ہم لوگ کمپلین کر رہے تھے کہ جی اونلی اسلام آباد ٹو اسکردو کا ٹکٹ تیس ہزار روپئے کا ہو گیا ٹھیک ہے ریٹرن تو ڈیجیٹل از دا پروبلی چیپسٹ اینڈ موسٹ ایفیشنٹ وے جسے ہم ادھر کا پیغام باہر پہنچا سکتے ہیں اور سوری میں تھوڑا سا ٹائم لوں گا بٹ ایم جس اسی جو پینل پہ ہم نے ڈسکس کیا کہ جو ایلیکس ہیں انہوں نے کیا ڈسکس کیا ہمارے جو جو پرابلمز انہوں نے ہائی لائٹ کیے اس پہ میں آئی ہیو ٹو پوائنٹس دیٹ آئی وانٹ ٹو ایڈریس ون از کہ وی کیئر ٹو مچ اباؤٹ واٹ ادرس ہیو ٹو سی اباؤٹ اس ہمیں بہت پریشانی ہوتی ہے کہ پاکستان کے بارے میں لوگ کیا کہہ رہے ہیں جب کہ ہم اس بارے میں پریشان بالکل نہیں ہوتے کہ ہم لوگوں نے خود اس بارے میں کیا کیا ٹھیک کرنے کے لیے میں صرف ایگزامپل یہ دے دیتا ہوں آئی واز آف دا سیم مائنڈ سیٹ مجھے پاکستان کو ریپرزینٹ کرنے کا موقع ملا علی بابا کے فاؤنڈر جیک ماں کے پاس اور میں نے ان کے لیے بہت میڈیا ٹائپ کوشچن پوچھا میں نے کہا کہ اگر یہ آج میں ان کو کیمرہ پہ کہہ دیتا ہوں نا یہ ان کو یہ کہتے ہیں کہ جی پاکستان ایک بہت زبردست کنٹری ہے ٹریول کرنے کے لیے تو شاید آج وہ ویڈیو وائرل ہو جائے گی اور پاکستانی لوگ پاکستان آنا چاہیں گے اور پاکستان ایک بہت زبردست کنٹری بن جائے گی ایک دم سے انہوں نے سو وین آئی آس ٹیم ہی گیو می اراؤنڈ تھرٹی منٹس صرف پاکستان کے اوپر جس پہ انہوں نے کہا کہ تمہیں کیوں فرق پڑتا ہے کہ جیک ماں پاکستان کے میں کیا سوچتا ہے تمہیں جس کنٹری کے پاس دو سو ملین کی پاپولیشن ہو جس میں سکسٹی پرسینٹ یوتھ ہو وہ آ کر پاکستان سے باہر آ کر لوگوں سے پوچھ رہے ہیں کہ جی آپ لوگ کیسے پاکستان کے بارے میں وہ کر سکتے ہیں چائنا ہیڈ دا سیم پرابلم چائنا کو لوگوں نے ویسٹ ویسٹرن سائڈ آف دا ورلڈ نے تیس سال کے لیے بلاک کر کے رکھا کہ چائنا میں سب غلط ہو رہا ہے بٹ جب آپ چائنا جا کر دیکھتے ہیں تو اب چائنا از از وے ہیڈ آف ایوری ون وہ صرف اپنے پیروں پہ کھڑے ہو کر انہوں نے کام کیا انہوں نے دنیا میں کسی کا سہارا لے کر کام نہیں کیا اور سوری جس ون مور پوائنٹ لانگ دوسری بات یہ کہ دا پارٹ ویئر پیپلس ہے کہ جی پاکستان میں فریڈم آف موومنٹ نہیں ہے ملٹری ہراس کرتی ہے پولیس ہراس کرتی ہے بیکاز ایک زمانہ تھا کہ ملک بہت زیادہ اوپن ٹو ایوری ون تھا ہمارا ایک سینٹر پوائنٹ ہے پاکستان یہ بات ہم مانتے ہیں ہمارے چاروں طرف دشمنوں نے ہمیں گھیرا ہوا ہے اور ہمیشہ ہمارے پاس ایگزامپلس ہیں کہ ایسا ہوا ہے جس کی وجہ سے پاکستان میں ٹوریزم کو افیکٹ ہوا ہے اور اس کی ایک میجر وجہ یہ ہے کہ ہم نے کبھی مولوں کو مانیٹر نہیں کیا اب ہم سوئٹزرلینڈ سے اپنا وہ کمپیئر نہیں کر سکتے جس کو پتا ہے کہ اس کا دیر از نو ون ہو از ٹرائنگ ٹو ڈی اسٹیبلائز سوئٹزرلینڈ بہاولپور میں ہم ایک ٹورسٹ کو اگر مانیٹر کرتے ہیں اس کی شاید وجہ یہی ہو رہی ہوتی ہے کہ وہاں سے راجستھان کا آگے بارڈر لگتا ہے اینڈ دین یو نو دیر دیر از دا لاٹ آف تھنگس ٹو تھنک اباؤٹ جو ہم لوگ دوسروں کی بات فوراً مان لیتے ہیں بٹ ہم نے خود ریسرچ نہیں کی ہوتی اور آپ لوگ ظاہر ہے بہت بہتر مجھے بھی بتا سکتے ہیں کہ اس طرح اینڈ یو نو مچ بیٹر دین آل آف اسو سیٹنگ اوپر ایئر سو دیز آر سم سم تھنگس دیٹ آئی ہیڈ ٹو شیئر آئی کمپلیٹلی اگری اور دوسری چیز یہ بھی آئی تھنک جس بھی ممالک کے اندر ایک نیسنٹ یا برجننگ ٹوریزم کا سیکٹر ہوتا ہے جو کہ گرو کر رہا ہوتا ہے اس کے اندر انڈیا کی ایگزامپل یہ اگر ہم اپنے ہمسائے کی لے لیں تو انہوں نے اپنے پہلے ڈومیسٹک انفراسٹرکچر اور ڈومیسٹک ٹوریزم کو سب سے پہلے فروغ دیا اس کی پالیسی مینجمنٹ کی گورمنٹل لیول کے اوپر ون آف دا موسٹ سکسیزفل مارکیٹنگ کیمپینس گلوبلی از دا انکریڈیبل انڈیا کیمپین ٹھیک ہے نا تو رادر دین یو نو لوکنگ اڈاس آن ہاؤ وے گنا انوویٹ آئی تھنک وی نیڈ سم اسٹرکچرل سپورٹ از ویل تھوڑی سی انفراسٹرکچر سپورٹ بھی چاہیے اینڈ اس کے اندر یو نو دا سینئرز دا گورمنٹ اینڈ ایوری بڈی ایلس دے دے ہیو اے ہیوج رول ٹو پلے جی اینی ادر کوشچنس سو ہائی آئی ایم راشد مائی کوشچن از ٹو آل دا پینلسٹ اسپیشلی کمیل کوشچن ہیز ٹو پارٹس سو لنک دا فرسٹ تھنگ از دیٹ وی آر ہیئر یو مینشن ان یور پریویس پارٹ آف دا کنورسیشن دیٹ currently the uh, business owners in this tourism field they are not doing much like there is no uh, competition enough competition there so there there is not much innovation entrepreneurship is about innovation meeting business right so how do you think that uh, i know it's a low hanging fruit currently in pakistan and you don't need to do much effort on that but still in the longer run you're soon going to be out of market because it's going to be saturated so how do you think they need to reinvent themselves or uh, since you yourself are a well traveled uh, person so your takeaways from the other countries that you have been to that we need to implement here in pakistan uh, the business models which are going to sustain for longer and secondly uh, the other part of the question 
small cities, because I also hail from a small city, I think they are feeling irrelevant and indifferent to all what is happening in terms of tourism in Pakistan, because primarily we talk about northern areas, Islamabad, Lahore, and Karachi, or all the mainstream destinations. How do you think they can stay relevant and be part of this league? So, two questions. One, so, Quick, ek, sorry, just quickly, sure. uh, short answer. Uh, so, please. one, so uh, when I say I'm well traveled, instead of Pakistan, I'm very well traveled. Baki, I've just been to China mainly. Uh, so, there was local tourism pe pura focus. Tha. China was very much focused on local tourism. There uh, 10% of the population are passport holders. So, this means only, so, uh, one billion mein se only uh, 10 million can travel abroad. Baki, they built all the local tourism. Hi build kiya. Uh, the other thing is that local spots, so lo how smaller cities can be a part of the, of the big game. Uh, usme what we are now doing is we are trying to go there and uh, learn ways ke how Faisalabad can be an attraction for people of Faisalabad, how Sialkot can be an attraction for people. We have done this in Bhitsha and Sindh, mein, where we went to uh, the, the mausoleum of Bhitsha. And there are guides who are very good, but they don't know what to guide as a guide. Karna kya hai. So, we have GB and Punjab DDCP guys and we have to tell them how to channelize what they can do better. So, like the so, experience is a lot but you have to find it. And digital, we can only market it. That's the max we can do from that. Uh, and we can reach So, that's, that's my uh, answer to that. I'm sorry, um, we're just kind of running out of time, so I'm going um, to have to uh, uh, wrap this up. Um, in the next session, um, uh, quite kind of an interesting session, uh, empowering transgenders in uh, tourism, um, which is going to be uh, Dr. Fazana Bari on stage as a moderator, um, and you're going to be uh, you're going to be listening to the first transgender professor, the first transgender politician, and the first transgender UN official uh, f for uh, from Pakistan. Um, in the meanwhile, I'd like everybody to uh, kind of get on stage and take a quick uh, group photo and uh, conclusion of the session. Thank you very much. Thank you.